We had the same birthday, Elizabeth Taylor and I, February 27th. Of course, she was five years older than me. It was also the birthday of Joanne Woodward and Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Now, she was a guest star on Hotel, which you may remember is the series of Aaron Spelling that I was the dialogue coach on and where I met a lot of these people. And she was on with her good friend Roddy McDowell. Now, many new rules came down from the office to the set before her arrival. Uh, first of all, it was to be a completely closed set. Uh, no visitors. Well, of course, this quickly went by the wayside when her son and her grandchildren started showing up. Uh, the other one that I loved was that she, we could call her Elizabeth or Miss Taylor. Never Liz. Never Liz. There were other, a lot of conditions, but they, they soon all just fell apart because, you know, she just came and she, she was a pro. She knew her work. She did her work. She wasn't, uh, she didn't need protecting, but uh, they always assumed that she did. This was her first job out, uh, after her first uh, tour at the Betty Ford Clinic, and she looked really great. She was thin and she was tan and she had gone kind of blonde. I've got a picture over there, which you can probably see later. Um, I used the excuse, of course, being the dialogue coach, that I needed to be around Elizabeth and Roddy constantly in case they needed to run lines, which of course they never did. Uh, but I didn't want to miss out on the conversation. But it was just stuff, you know, basically that good friends talk about, you know, where they went on vacation, what the grandkids were doing. And one day, for some reason, the conversation got around and Roddy started talking about Shelley Winters, who had appeared as a guest star on the show previous to this and had not endeared herself to either cast or crew. And Roddy was telling Elizabeth how fat Shelley had gotten. And Elizabeth said, well, is she really that fat? And he said, oh, Bessie, she's huge. And Elizabeth said, well, why don't they get on her case when she's fat? They get on my case when I'm fat. And he said, but Bessie, she was never a beauty like you. Elizabeth Taylor had an absolutely wonderful sense of humor and could make fun of herself. I remember we were doing one camera setup and uh, the, the director of photography said, now Elizabeth, if you'd face camera right, please. And she turned to her right. And he said, no, uh, Elizabeth, camera right, please. And she looked right and she looked left and she looked there and she said oh well now you would think after all the time i've been doing this that i would know that wouldn't you now let me see camera right is my left oh that'll be easy to remember that's where i wear all my engagement rings well you see i think she was putting so on the whole time she just wanted to use that punch line and it was a good one on her first day she and roddy had only one shot coming out of an elevator with a bunch of reporters around and it was crowded and it was hot and she was in fur coat and oh that was the hottest set well while they were lighting I was standing very close to them and she and Roddy were there and she had a great big paper cup of cola and she was drinking it and she leaned over and whispered into Roddy's ear and they laughed and I stood there and I said well what are you two laughing at when I, you see, at this point, I had been around so many famous people that I had no fear. And she was a nice, I said, what are you two laughing at? And she just giggled and said, oh, I just said to Roddy, in the old days, this would have been Jack Daniels. <laughs> uh, oh, one day we were shooting a scene of Elizabeth in bed and something had gone wrong with the lighting and they called cut and uh, you know when they get you in bed for those scenes they don't want you to get out because then they have to take a lot of time to put you back in and make you nice and smooth and pretty so Elizabeth knows that and so she doesn't move she just stays there and I go over with the script and I said Elizabeth these two lines right here you messed up and she looked at the script she said oh honey you know I can't see anything without my glasses and I said well here try mine and she put them on and gave a roaring laugh and she said, ah, we're just the same.
old. <laughs> oh, by the way, here are the glasses. <laughs> I have them. These are the ones she wore. I've used them in theater a lot. But anyway, another day we were shooting out on the back lot. There was a, a, an outdoor restaurant set up, supposedly connected to the exterior of the hotel. And we shot there several times and had glass top tables all around and a lot of greenery. And Elizabeth and I were sitting at one of the tables running lines while they were finishing the lighting. And to emphasize one of her more uh, dramatic lines, she slammed her hand down on that glass top table and suddenly went, oh shit, never do that with a large diamond on. Of course, it was the one that Richard Burton had given her. On her last day of shooting, she suddenly was seized with terrible back pain that put her right down on the floor. Now, this is a problem she'd had ever since she was uh, a teenager when she was filming National Velvet and got thrown from the horse and hurt her back. And all through the years, no matter, no matter what kind of medical attention she was given, she was never given much relief, but uh, she was in great pain. And very quickly, her bodyguard was there and gen gently lifted her up and took her out to the motor home. And Roddy followed her and came back in pretty soon and said that, and well, we tried to go on with some work, you know, with me reading her lines off camera. But pretty soon he came back in and said that Elizabeth had been taken home. So uh, we basically had to shut down shooting for the day and the next day we started a new episode with Elizabeth's work unfinished. Well, finally she recovered and she came onto the set and we finished the episode and moved on. And shortly after that, Richard Burton died. And shortly after that, Elizabeth was back on the set to do some looping. And she asked the producer that was with her that would it be all right after she finished looping if she came and sat on the set for a while and just watched. And we were on that huge lobby set that was a replica of the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco. It was massive, massive, and lots of people. But they were all shooting down toward one end and I had sort of backed off because my work was done for that bit. And I saw Elizabeth come in with the producer and she stood there while he went and got her a chair. And she sat there all by herself and I went over and I said simply that it was good to see her again. And she thanked me. And I said, well, I had to go back to work. And I don't know how long she stayed there because the next time I looked up, she was gone. But you know, it struck me that at this time of great sadness in her life, Richard Burton's death, that she would take comfort by coming and sitting in a studio watching a movie being made. I remembered that a lot of giant had been shot on that sound stage. Those were places where she'd spent most of her life. They must have seemed like home. <laughs>